Hello, welcome to this introduction to probability distribution fitting with R. The purpose of distribution fitting is finding the best fitting theoretical probability distribution for the observed data. In this lecture or in this video, we are going to cover three different functions that are associated with the packages MASS, Fit Distribution Plus, and GAM LSS. Note that the last function, the fit dist with the capital D, we do not need to specify a specific distribution prior to implementing the function. Also note that this video is only a short introduction and an overview to a very broad field of research. And there are many more aspects that are going beyond the scope of this video. Now, empirical work often requires that we have some understanding about the underlying distribution of data. Examples are, for example, uh, if you think about uh, corn yields or mice yields in a particular county, and you have data about the yield distribution, then you, over the years, then you may be interested in what is the probability uh, in a given year that the yield is below a certain threshold. That may be important for insurance, crop insurance purposes. You can also think about the wind speed distribution of the particular location if you are thinking about constructing a wind farm or in wind turbine. Then uh, electricity production or the use of the turbine is not possible below or above a certain wind speed. And given data on the wind speed distribution in the county or at the location, you can calculate the probability that in a given year uh, the wind speed falls below or above a certain level. Now, keep in mind that all those probability distributions are uh, characterized by one or more parameters. So, for example, think about the normal distribution which is characterized by the mean and also by the variance. And we are going to look in this video how we estimate those parameters and then also how the data actually fits the uh, theoretical distribution. Now, to start off, let us do an introductory example. We are going to use the viable distribution, and we are going to randomly generate a thousand observations. And here, in this case, we know the two parameters of the randomly generated data. Those are parameters associated with the viable distribution, and the shape parameter is going to be set equal to 2, and the scale parameter is set equal to 1.5. Now, before we generate the data, let us do some preliminary steps. Specifically, let us load the data that we are going to use later. And the data is available on the GitHub webpage. And here I have simply copy and pasted the command, which automatically loads the data from the GitHub webpage. Also note that for this, this for this video, we are going to need a couple of packages. And so the packages are already installed on my computer. And hence, if you do not have those packages, then I would uh, suggest that you, implement, that you install them first. Specifically, we are going to use the uh, package MASS for mass. We are going to use the package that is called um, GAMLSS. And we are going to use the package called Fit Distribution Plus. Okay, so here I mark the three, or I highlight the three packages and I run the command so that we have them available to us if we need them. Now, let us generate the Bible data where we said before we have. 10,000 operations, uh, 10,000 observations, 
and the shape parameter is 2 and the scale parameter is uh, 1.5. So let's say Weibull data equals R Weibull parentheses open n is equal to 10,000 shape is equal to 2 and scale is equal to 1.5. So now we have the randomly generated data uh, right here. And let us first plot a histogram of the randomly generated data. So here we say hist, variable data, and let's also make sure that we name the histogram and we just say a histogram of Weibull data. Here, now you have the histogram and you see that the Weibull data or the Weibull, gen the Weibull distribution in general is not a symmetric distribution okay? in the sense that you have the mass of the uh, observations more on the Right hand side on the left hand side, and there are few in the uh, in the upper uh, tail. Also note that the distribution is specified on the positive uh, real line. So let's close this, and so now let's see if we can actually recover those parameters, the two and the one point five, if we can recover those with the uh, distribution fitting ability of R. Now, to do so, we are going to use the function fit this, this R, and this function is associated with the package uh, MASS. Note what you need to do in this package. You have to feed in the data into the function, so here is going to be the Bible data. You have to specify what type of uh, distribution uh, you, you think it is. So here, of course, so we do know that the, we, have, we are facing a Bible distribution. So here I make it easy that we are also saying that it is a Bible distribution. And here you, the two parameters here are the lower bounds in the sense that both parameters need to be positive. Okay. So now note that in general, uh, you have a little bit of an idea of how the distribution is going to, or what type of distribution uh, you need to use for your data, but we are getting into the details a little bit later. Right now, we are just generating the data uh, and then we are fitting this Bible distribution and you will see that we are actually indeed uh, able to recover the shape and scale parameters. Now note that um, the shape and scale parameters estimated that are going to come out of this particular exercise or this particular session with R is going to be different from what you see here on the slides and it's also going to be different from what you see uh, on your computer since this is randomly generated data and so there will be variations across the various uh, usages. So here now, we have the, uh, let's call it uh, viable uh, parameters, which we are going to estimate. And we are going to use this fit distribution, fit this R. And so you also see that you have uh, the package associated, which is um, MASS in this case. So here we say uh, viable data, comma, then the density function that we think it is, is uh, viable. And then we also have to put those lower bounds here of uh, zero and zero, okay? So you can use the software or you can use the fit distribution or the fit dist R without those bounds, uh, but you're simply going to get uh, error messages, okay? So I would like to avoid this as much as possible. So now I have executed the uh, estimation of the uh, density function. And so the um, 
estimates are here in um, Bible, para, shape, estimate, shape, and scale. And you can see that here the shape parameter, which we implemented or we are imposed to be two when we generated the random data, is uh, close to two. And it is the scale parameter is also close to the uh, 1.5 which we have implemented uh, before. Now then, we would like to have a look at the results in the sense of how well did the data, how well does the distribution actually fit the underlying data. So here, um, and we're going to soon implement this in R, you can see that we have the histogram of the Bible data. So the gray bars is the observed data and the uh, solid black line is the estimated or the estimated theoretical uh, distribution with the shape parameters and scale with the shape and scale parameter we have here. Okay, and you see that of course the um, we have generated a viable distribution, and the, of course the distribution of a viable or when you fit a viable distribution, it fits very well. So in order, if you want to implement, if you want to get this histogram, what I, uh, what I would do is you simply say, um, you have to plot a histogram, and again, you have to plot a histogram of the Bible data. But here, you need to make sure that you're not interested. Here you have the count data. So here you need the, uh, you do not, or sorry, here you have the, the frequency data but you actually need the density so that basically the area underneath here is scaled back to one. So you have to put frequency equals false. Okay, so when you do this, you will see that now you have the density here. So all the area, all the gray area adds up to one. So you have seen this in a previous video about the uh, probability distribution functions. And so now let us also set the limit going from uh, zero to six. And let us also set the, um, the limit on the density here. So the X lim is going from zero to 0 0.6, okay? So actually, so I reverse this, this is X and this should be Y, okay? So here the x-axis goes from 0 to 6, and we make sure that, that the y-axis goes from 0 to 0 0.6, okay? Now let us also generate a sequence here, which goes from 0 to 6 to, uh, by a step of 0.1. So this is SEQ. And so what it does here, it has this, this range. So let's have a quick look at it. So it's plotting this range from zero to, uh, to six by steps of uh, point 0.1. And we are going to evaluate the viable distribution at all those, uh, at all those steps, okay? At all those points. That will then give us the, that will give us the line. So now we have generated the, the histogram and then we say lines and the range and then the density function of the Bible. You can plot that with the D Bible. And that would be over the range. And then the shape is going to be the uh, Bible data, a uh, Bible uh, parameters, the first estimate. and the viable parameters, the second estimate. So when you execute this, now you have the line or the, the theoretical distribution line, and you see that this indeed uh, fits, the, fits the data very well. Okay. This is of course not a surprise given of how we have generated this data. So this is only an introductory example. So let us move now to a situation where we actually do not know the distribution before we actually do the estimation. 
Okay. So let's look a little bit at more details of how to approach distribution fitting if you do not know the candidate or if you do not know the, uh, the actual distribution. So there are uh, general steps. And note that some of, some of those steps I have taken from uh, fitting distribution, distributions with R, which uh, provides some additional information. So the steps are that in general, you have a hypothesis about possible candidate distributions. For example, you know whether you are looking for a discrete or a continuous distribution, or you know whether you are looking for the entire real number line or versus positive numbers only. So for example, with the normal distribution, it's possible to also generate negative numbers. Whereas, for example, with the Bible distribution, you're only generating uh, positive numbers or positive, you have only positive uh, numbers. Now, the histogram or plotting the histogram is always a valuable first approach where it gives you an idea about the, the shape, the skewness of the data, and this may inform your choice of possible uh, probability distributions. Then in the next step, you have to do the parameter estimation. Uh, for example, in the previous case, we had to calculate the shape and the scale parameters of the Bible distribution. Or in the case of a normal distribution, you would have to calculate the mean and the variance of the normal distribution, okay? Or associated with the normal distribution. In the third step, based on your parameter estimation, you actually have to look of whether the uh, distribution which you have, uh, which you are using, or which the uh, the parameters you have estimated, estimated, whether it fits well with the uh, actual observed data or the empirical data, and we are going to have a look at this in this uh, video. So let's have another example here. In this case, we are going to use the Meridian Hills data, and again, you have this uh, data set included in the file which I have loaded right here. And um, this contains 101 home values in the Meridian Hills neighborhood in Indianapolis. And note that here for scaling purposes, we are actually going to divide the home values by a thousand. Now, when you look at the histogram of the data, then there are at least uh, three candidate distributions. There's going to be the gamma distribution, there's going to be the uh, Bible distribution, which we have seen before. And there's also going to be the log normal distribution. Okay. Now note that if the, uh, if X has a log normal distribution and you take the natural logarithm of X and obtain Y, then Y has a normal distribution with a uh, mean, a uh, mu, and variance uh, sigma squared, or standard deviation uh, sigma, okay? So let us implement uh, this approach in R. So in the first step, we are just using mh price is equal to mh1 the price divided by a thousand. Okay. So you can plot this data now, and you see how, how the distribution of uh, home values uh, actually looks like. Okay, And remember that 1,500 is associated with a home value of uh, uh, 1 1.5 1 million. So let us estimate those three uh, possible distributions. So we have MH uh, gamma, this uh, fit this R, and we are looking, we are implementing the MH price, and the function would be, or the distribution would be gamma. We do the same for the uh, Bible, and also the same for the uh, log normal. So here we just have to say Bible, and again here in this case we are going to uh, limit or we are going to set a lower bound of the parameter estimates. This is going to avoid any errors. And then here we are saying log normal. Okay. So let's me, let me rename those uh, those objects here so that they are not uh, overwritten. Let's call it a norm. Let us estimate those uh, 
three functions. And so now we have those uh, parameter estimates associated with those uh, dis distributions. So here, for example, uh, mh gamma, we would uh, we could you can we could see that the estimates would be uh, for the shape parameter would be two point one, and for the rate parameter associated with the gamma distribution would be point zero zero five or almost point zero zero six. Okay. Now the question is how does this estimate how does those how do those estimates of the various parameters associated with the different distributions how does it actually look like um, in a histogram okay so here in this case we are going to plot a histogram again of the mh price data and then we are going to overlay the various uh, results uh, or the various uh, theoretical distribution functions over the histogram okay And here in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the commands uh, into the R console. Okay. And let me just go over of what is going on here. So here note that those uh, those commands are very similar to what we are doing up here with the Bible data. Okay. In the sense that first I create a histogram where I'm looking at the not the frequency but the density. The upper limit of the uh, density is going to be at 0 0.0025. And then we are going to look at the range from 0 to 2000, or basically from 0 to $2 million. And here I'm also going to name it uh, Meridian Hills. Then we are going to create this range. So here the range is from 0 to uh, 2000 by steps of 1, so basically by steps of $1,000. And then all I do here in the next lines, let me just uh, do this slightly differently here. All I do in the next lines, uh, in the next uh, three uh, commands, is uh, I am using this data, I'm using this histogram, and I'm using the range, and then I'm plotting the gamma distribution, the Bible distribution, and the uh, log normal distribution over the range, and I am using the parameters that were estimated in the lines uh, 16 through 18, okay? So this just cuts down a little bit on the typing here. Now let me just execute those lines. And note that I have, uh, must have a typo here. Yeah, let's call this uh, law, uh, norm. So let's Run this again. And so now you will see what the uh, estimates look like overlaid over the, uh, the, the data. So here in this case, you see that the, uh, the blue line would be if you were to fit a gamma distribution uh, to the observed data. You could also fit the uh, Bible distribution, which is the uh, red data. And the log normal distribution would be the uh, green data. And you see that it seems like the, by the log normal distribution may not be as good as a fit as the two other distributions. Okay. So let's uh, close this and let's have a look, a better look at the details of how well does do those distributions actually fit. To look at the fit, we are going to use a slightly different approach for the uh, distribution fitting. Okay, so here again are the functions which I have used before. The results are also in the slides, but now let us have a look at the goodness of fit of the data. Now, in this step, we are going to look at the function fit dist. Note that compared to the previous version, the R here is missing. And this uh, fit dist function uh, is associated with the package fit distribution plus or fit distur plus. Okay. And note that this is a package which you have, uh, which you should have installed before. So 
we are going to look at various graphs or we are going to generate various graphs like this based on the functions, uh, based on the distribution fitting with those, uh, with the same data than before. So let's get back to, uh, let's get back to R. And let's say again, we are going to have uh, MH gamma. We are simply going to overwrite of what we had here before. And let's actually, uh, let's copy and paste this. But here we are using the function fit list R. And so we have to do slight uh, changes. So we can leave the MH price, we can leave the gamma, but we also have to specify here the uh, lower bounds of the parameter estimates. So they are always going to be positive. Same is true for the uh, Bible distribution. You have to set them to uh, the lower bound. And then uh, here we actually, for the fit disk, it's called a norm. And again, we are going to look at the lower bound here so that the parameter estimates are not going to be uh, negative. Okay. So let's execute this. And there's a mistake here. Let's do this again. There we go. And so let us now uh, have a look at the goodness of it. Now, the advantage of the package or using the package um, um, fit this R plus is that the objects here contain a lot of information. Okay. Specifically, what we're going to do is we are going to say plot and then we say mh gamma and then let us do the zoom and then you're getting uh, four particular plots okay now we are not going to look at the, uh, the probability plot down here but we are going to have a quick look at the two other plots here, at the three other plots, because the three other plots give you a little bit of an idea of how well the data fits the distribution you are fitting. So here in this first case, we have estimated the, uh, the gamma distribution. Okay, so we have used uh, gamma. And so here we have, again, this is similar to what we have seen before. We have the histogram. And we also have the distribution that we have just fitted. Okay. Now here in the bottom picture, we have the empirical uh, cumulative uh, distribution function. Okay. So we have seen this in previous videos. Okay. Or in also in uh, previous lectures, which tell you of, say, for example, that in the Meridian Hills neighborhood, about 80% of homes that were on the market at the time this survey was or this, um, this the data collection was conducted that 80 percent of the homes have a value of below five hundred thousand dollars okay and you can see that the red line is the theoretical uh, distribution or the theoretical uh, cdf associated with the uh, with the uh, with the fitted distribution okay so here you would see that for uh, for 80 percent Okay, that we would estimate that uh, um, that eighty percent of homes are actually below six hundred thousand uh, six hundred thousand dollars, and not what you would see like in uh, in reality that it's about five hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars. Now here you also have um, the what is called the QQ plot. Okay, in the sense that you have the theoretical quantiles on the uh, horizontal axis. And you have the empirical quantiles on the vertical axis. And theoretically, those quantiles, okay, which are also related to the, to the empirical CDF, all those uh, points, okay, those are the observations. Those observations should be uh, lining up, if it was a perfect fit, would be lining up on the uh, QQ plot uh, on this straight line. Okay. If they are deviating from the, uh, if they're deviating or not lying on the straight line, this means that uh, there's a problem with your, um, the, it's not a very good, uh, it's not a perfect fit. Okay. But you should keep in mind that you never have a perfect, uh, you never have a perfect fit. 
Now, just to show you of how those graphs would actually look like if there was a perfect fit, then let us go back to the uh, Bible data, which we have uh, estimated, which we have estimated before. Okay, so let's just go um, and let's just call this the um, uh, initial example. Let's again fit this. And we are just using the Bible data, comma, we say Bible, comma, and then uh, lower. A note, keep in mind that the Bible data, we know it's a, it is a Bible function, okay, or it's generated from a, a random number generator using um, um, simulating Bible data. Okay, So we should have a perfect fit. So let's estimate this. Let's say plot initial example. And then when you zoom, you see of how well the, uh, the data fits both the uh, empirical and the theoretical cumulative distribution function as well as the, the QQ plot. Okay, so this is how the, uh, this was basically uh, simulating a perfect fit, which of course you are never going to have in your, uh, if you're uh, working with uh, real data. So let's close this again. So on the slides you have the for the gamma distribution uh, you have the four plots you have the uh, four plots for the uh, bible distribution and keep in mind that the uh, log normal distribution uh, did not fit uh, did not fit uh, very well based on the based on the histogram but we see that for the empirical and theoretical uh, cdf that the uh, fit is actually not that bad keep in mind that the Bin size of the histogram also determines of how those um, how the how the fit actually looks like. Okay, so you should basically use probably the empirical and theoretical CDF graph or the QQ plot to evaluate uh, the fit of your the fit of your data. Now let us also do another example here, and we are using the data called ground beef. And that is data which is associated with the uh, function or the, the fit dist uh, plus package. Okay. And the data is the use, or oh, sorry, is the, is the serving size collected in the French survey uh, for ground beef patties uh, consumed by children under five years uh, old. Okay. To load the data, what we're going to do is you have to just type in data ground beef and the data will be automatically in here. So data ground beef, and then you can also plot the data. Uh, this is serving, and here you see how the uh, the serving sizes actually look like in a histogram. Here again, we do not know anything about the possible uh, underlying distributions, so or distributions. So we have to uh, we have to employ uh, guesses. And here, in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to assume that there are four possible distributions: the normal distribution, the Bible, the gamma, and the log normal distribution. Again, note that I kind of know already that the uh, normal distribution is probably not as good as a fit, okay? But this is only for um, uh, explanatory purposes that I'm including the uh, normal distribution in this, um, in this uh, example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the, the fit distribution, the fit dist um, command as before using the normal, the Bible, the gamma, and the L norm. And then uh, I am combining the estimates in a list, and then uh, we are actually uh, able to plot them uh, all in, in one graph, okay? Note that here again, I am going to um, copy and paste the command in order to cut down on the typing. 
but I also, of course, uh, let you know of what is exactly uh, going on here. Okay. So basically, in the first four lines, we are simply going to fit the four distributions, the normal, the viable, the gamma, and the log normal. And then we are combining the, all the estimates in a, in a list. Okay, our list is not that list is a function that is associated with, uh, with R. And it is basically, um, you can think about this as a container where you can uh, collect all sorts of, all sorts of data. Okay, and note that we are here uh, defining an object which is called plot legend. Okay, and here we are just using the uh, associating uh, names with those estimates normal, viable, uh, log normal, and uh, gamma. Okay, and so actually, here we should probably use the uh, normal, viable, gamma since uh, gamma here is on third place. Okay, so let's estimate this and note that there will be error messages. I actually know there are none which is uh, good. And so now uh, what we can do is we can look at the uh, graphs all at once. Okay. So in the sense that we have all the graph, all the uh, four distributions plus the uh, observed data in the same graph. So let us see of how this uh, actually looks like. Now the good thing that we have clustered the estimates in a list that we can use some functions associated with the package, uh, specifically uh, the dense comp function. And there will be two other functions. And basically what they are doing, they are comparing the four estimates or whatever number of distributions you have estimated. And they're comparing them in, uh, in graphs like we have done before. So here in this case, we write dense uh, comparison, dense comp, and we are just saying the, the fitted uh, distributions. And then we say the uh, legend text is equal to the uh, plot legend. We execute this and now we have the histogram of the ground beef data, okay? And we have the, which represents the observed data. And then we also have the various distributions. And you can see that the normal distribution does not fit the data very well, which is not a surprise since the data uh, has, is not symmetric, okay? In the sense that you have the mass here and you have a very long tail here on the right hand side. But the uh, normal distribution is actually for uh, for symmetric values. Okay, so the normal distribution here in this case is not uh, is not very useful. And also note that the normal distribution in this case would even result in negative values. Okay, so here the normal di distribution can be basically discarded. But you see that the other three candidate distributions, the viable, the gamma, and the log normal, seem to fit the data um, relatively, relatively well. Now, here we have the historic histogram and the theoretical densities. Note that we can also compare the, uh, the cumulative uh, empirical distribution function. So here we would write uh, CDF comp, and then we are feeding in the same uh, information as before. And now you see here uh, how the, uh, the black lines and the black dots represent the observed uh, data, okay? And you see that there are the, those serving sizes are actually uh, clustered, for example, here probably around uh, 50, and say, for example, here 75. Okay, so there's uh, basically you have many observations around those points, and you can see of how this uh, this affects then the empirical CDF. But you can also look at the uh, the theoretical CDFs, and again you see that the viable gamma and log normal are a better fit than the uh, than the normal distribution. Okay, so let us um, close this. And so now let us move uh, move on.
specifically to the situation if we do not know or if we do not have any idea about the uh, possible distributions that or the possible distribution that would fit our data. Okay. So here in this case, we are going to use the function fitDist. Note that this fitDist is different from what we have uh, used before because here the D is actually capitalized and the function fit this is from the package uh, GAMLSS. And basically what it does is uh, it is looking at the, it is looking at the, all, all, it looks at many possible distributions and basically tells you which seems, which the most appropriate uh, distribution uh, fits your data. Okay. So let us have a look of how this uh, works in R. And so here in this case, we are going to uh, implement this, say the output. Here, fit this with the capitalized D. And here we are first going to look at the ground beef data, uh, the, the Meridian Hills data, where we implement or where we feed in the price. And then here with the type, when I say, uh, when the option here is uh, real plus, that means that we are just looking at the, uh, the, the real line at the positive side. So all, so we are only having positive observations. And so we are only looking at distributions that are defined on the, uh, on the positive uh, real line. So here you can ignore those uh, those messages here for the moment, and then when we look at the uh, output here, so output uh, family, then you see that the uh, that the software returns that an inverse gamma function may be the most appropriate for the uh, for the uh, meridian hills uh, housing data. Okay, and then you also have the uh, estimates. So the, um, the uh, all parameters where you have the uh, the two estimates associated with the uh, inverse uh, gamma function. Here again, you can look at the output plots. So for uh, so for the um, for this for the, um, the fit dist function, you can say uh, plot. Output, comma, and then let's, let's do the summaries. Uh, let's actually just do the output. And then you see again here about this uh, this normal Q Q plot. This is now for the this is now for the uh, for the housing data for the Meridian Hills, and you can actually see that for the uh, for the Q Q plot. That uh, the results are actually uh, rather uh, relatively uh, on, this, on the line that we were looking at before. So it seems that the inverse gamma function here would be a very good fit at uh, describing the data or the describing the distribution of housing values in the Mer Meridian Hills uh, neighborhood. Okay. And now we can also have. A look at the uh, the ground beef data. So here, let's just say uh, the uh, ground beef. Here, the serving size, and see what type of uh, what type of uh, function. And here, it seems that the ground beef data seems to fit a gamma function uh, better than any other. And we can just uh, plot the data again. And this is for the uh, ground beef function, where again, we have the, uh, the plots to a certain degree that we have seen, seen before, especially the, the QQ plot. Actually, so you can, you, you can ignore the, the three other plots. And uh, this would be a good, fit or the gamma function would be a good fit for the ground beef data. Okay. Now note that there are many aspects associated with uh, probability distribution fitting. 
and this video is only intended to cover the beginnings and there will uh, likely be uh, another video in the uh, in the future about this thank you very much